My name is Dr. Worshba, and this talk is on juvenile idiopathic arthritis, or for short, JIA. The learning objectives and the purpose of this presentation is to learn about juvenile idiopathic arthritis, referred to as JIA, also referred to as inflammatory arthritis. We will talk about the definition, epidemiology, risk factors, pathophysiology, symptoms, classification, complications, and management of GIA. In addition, a brief description of uveitis, which is a complication of GIA, will be provided. And finally, the prognosis of GIA will be included throughout the presentation as we talk about each subcategory. So what is juvenile idiopathic arthritis? This is a broad term of childhood rheumatic diseases that begin before the age of 16. It is characterized by joint inflammation that lasts for more than 6 weeks. If onset is after 16 years, it is called adult onset stills disease. It is more common in females than males. By definition, arthritis is inflammation of a joint usually presenting as swelling, stiffness, decreased range of motion, and with or without pain. Rheumatoid arthritis is no longer used as a diagnosis in children. It is important to note that JIA is a clinical diagnosis, which means that there are no labs or tests to confirm it. Therefore, it is important to recognize the signs and symptoms. So, JIA is classified based on a diagnosis of exclusion. Therefore, it is necessary to rule out malignancy, infection, and trauma prior to diagnosing JIA. Since there are no specific laboratory findings, and it is often common to have normal labs, clinical exam findings are the most important and only way to diagnose JIA. So swelling, warmth, and or stiffness must be present for more than six weeks prior to diagnosing JIA, since infections or post-infectious processes can present exactly like JIA, but should resolve by six weeks, if not sooner. The cutoff age for the diagnosis of JIA is less than 16. So, for example, if someone is seen at the age of 18, but reports symptoms that started when they were 15, then this is consistent with JIA. JIA is the most common rheumatic disease in children and is as prevalent as diabetes, with an estimated 300,000 children affected. The etiology of GIA is generally idiopathic. However, there may be certain immunological predispositions such as different HLA associations. It may also be triggered by a viral or bacterial infection. The pathophysiology of GIA is due to an autoimmune or autoinflammatory disease. There is chronic synovial inflammation with infiltration of plasma cells. B lymphocytes and T lymphocytes. This leads to hyperplasia of the joint capsule and consequently a growth of fibrovascular connective tissue, also known as penis. There may be invasion of the articular surface, which then leads to a loss of joint function. GIA can involve any joint and is diagnosed, as we said before, on clinical examination. The distribution of joint swelling often indicates which category of GIA, and this is relevant to the rheumatologist who prescribes the specific treatments. A cardinal feature that differentiates inflammatory arthritis from other types of injuries or arthritis is the presence of morning stiffness lasting more than 30 minutes. So uveitis is uveal tract inflammation that occurs with JIA, other systemic illnesses, or alone. The highest risk for uveitis is in children with polyarthritis or oligoarticular arthritis, children less than 7 years, and those with a positive ANA. It is the most serious complication of JIA since it causes blindness if left untreated. Since uveitis is often asymptomatic, the only way to diagnose it is with a slit lamp examination by an ophthalmologist. ANA positivity in a child diagnosed with oligoarticular or polyarticular arthritis under the age of 7 conveys the highest risk for uveitis. 
These children require slit lamp examinations every three to four months for at least the first four years after diagnosis. Treatment of arthritis when uveitis is present often requires systemic immunosuppression. There are seven subtypes of JIA classified based on the pattern of joint involvement. Since the disease may take time to evolve, the JIA subtype is not certain until after six months of onset. The first type is oligoarticular JIA, which is the most common form of JIA occurring in 50% of children with JIA. This is previously referred to as pauciarticular arthritis and is arthritis involving less than five joints after six months' time. Usually, larger joints, such as knees and ankles, are asymmetrically involved. It is rare for the hips to be involved. Oligoarticular arthritis usually presents in toddlers and preschool age kids. So here is a typical presentation. A parent reports that their two-year-old, who was previously walking well, one day woke up and had a gait change. The child is holding his leg in a weird position, or the parents note that there is swelling, yet the child continues to remain active, tries to keep up with his siblings, and rarely complains of pain. This is an important point, as pain is not a reliable indicator of arthritis in children. They tend to compensate accordingly. Also of importance is that uveitis affects 20 to 30 percent of children with oligoarticular arthritis. Exclusions for the diagnosis of oligoarticular JIA are listed in the slide. The next type of arthritis is polyarticular arthritis, which includes both rheumatoid factor negative and rheumatoid factor positive arthritis. Poly refers to five or more joints with arthritis occurring in the first six months. RF positive or rheumatoid factor positive is not as common in children as it is in adults, and in fact, less than 5% of all kids with JIA actually have rheumatoid factor positive arthritis. Polyarthritis tends to occur in the toddler or the adolescent age group and is more common in females with a ratio of 3 to 1. The distribution of polyarticular JIA is more symmetric, involving the small joints such as PIPs, MCPs, wrists, etc. Usually, children diagnosed with polyarticular arthritis have a worse course than those compared with oligo. RF positive, even worse. However, this does vary. The next type of arthritis we will talk about is emphysitis-related arthritis also referred to as spondylarthropathy or juvenile ankylosing spondylitis. Enthesitis is inflammation at the sites of attachment of ligaments to bone. Hence, enthesitis-related arthritis is a chronic inflammatory arthritis often accompanied by inflammation of these areas. Sacroiliac joint involvement is characteristic. There is a strong association with HLA-B27, suggesting a genetic component there is also an association with inflammatory bowel disease. Spondylarthropathy is more common in males. It occurs in the axial and peripheral skeleton most commonly. However, limitation of motion of the lumbar spine is usually a later finding and therefore not part of the diagnostic criteria in children as it is in adults. The uveitis associated with enthesitis-related arthritis is usually symptomatic, accompanied by redness, pain, and photophobia. Next, psoriatic and undifferentiated arthritis. So the criteria for psoriatic arthritis includes two of the following, dactylitis or inflammation of the finger, nail pitting or psoriasis in a first-degree relative, along with arthritis in the patient. It is usually asymmetric, involves the SI joints or sacroiliac joints, and often includes dactylitis, also known as sausage digits. Children do not often have signs of psoriasis, so the family history is important. The onset of rash often occurs after the arthritis has been diagnosed, but sometimes a rash never occurs. Since skin findings can be subtle, it is important to look for lesions in the hairline, behind the ears, the scalp, or in the intergluteal creases. 
Undifferentiated arthritis, as the name implies, includes arthritis that does not meet any of the criteria or meet criteria for more than one category. Systemic arthritis is a category which requires its own lecture, but briefly, the criteria includes arthritis and at least two weeks of fever, which must be quotidian, meaning recurring daily for at least three days, plus at least one of the following, an evanescent erythematous rash, generalized lymph node enlargement, hepatomegaly, or splenomegaly, or serocytis. Quiz time. Question 1. A parent reports that their two-year-old child, who was previously walking well, one day woke up and had a gait change. The child is holding his leg in an odd position, and the parent notes that there is swelling in the knee. Yet, the child continues to remain active, tries to keep up with his siblings, and rarely complains of pain. What is the possible diagnosis? The answer is F, all of the above. Question 2. Which of the following are criteria required for the diagnosis of juvenile idiopathic arthritis? The answer is both A and C.